We're on our way to Oshkosh, but what would a bucket list flight be without the suspense of something going wrong? It's time for a failure. Hey everyone, Clay from Clayviation.com. We're on the fourth leg of our flight from Nashville, Tennessee to Oshkosh, Wisconsin for the big Air Venture Oshkosh fly-in. As we make our way through Chicago and near our destination, let's look at setting up a failure. If you flew along for our flight to the Bahamas, you might remember that we set up a whole host of possible failures before setting out over the ocean, and then we watched closely to troubleshoot what might have failed. We had a whole bunch of bullets in the chamber of failures, but today we're only loading one, and that's engine failure. It's the one thing pilots and non-pilots alike seem to fear the most. Before we get going, let's go ahead and set up our failure in our control panel. So if we go up to the main flight menu and click on customize on our airplane, we can actually go down to this failures button here. If you're unsure of what you have selected in the failures, you can begin with clicking Fix All Systems to make sure only what you're uh, selecting now is actually uh, set up to fail. In this case, we just click on Engines and click on Failures. And if we go down to Engine Fail 1, we can turn this from Always Working to Set Mean Time until Failure. In this case, 60 minutes works well. I like that. So let's keep that there, hit Done, and Apply Changes. We are now literally set up for failure. Before we get going, let's knock out the subscribe checklist. So like this video and let me know you're watching. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you know when I have a new flight ready for you to join me on. And comment on this video if you feel so inclined. Speaking of commenting, I had a conversation going in the comments about using trim in the airplane. And if this is a new concept to you, you might not have known it existed. But once you understand it, your sim flying will never be the same. So let's have a brief discussion on trim before we get going. The trim tab is back on the tail of the airplane here on the elevator. And the tab is actuated by a little push bar underneath it. It's controlled by us up here in the cockpit. This little trim wheel, which is in the center console, can be moved towards the nose down or nose up trim position. You notice in the takeoff checklist, for instance, it says set trim to takeoff, which is just setting the line here at the little arrow uh, for the takeoff position. But what that allows us to do is trim off control pressures that we might have on the actual airplane. So if we're in a climb and we're pulling back on the yoke and we need to hold that climb pressure in, we can actually trim by applying some nose up trim and that will help us relieve the pressure off of the yoke. We'll talk a little bit more about that trim in flight, but it's important that you set that trim up to some keys because reaching down and actually actuating that wheel in the airplane is not practical at all. I've got mine set to a rocker key on my yoke, so it's really helpful if you can just uh, you know, rock her up or rock her down to adjust your trim. Some yokes in the real world have an electric trim button on the yoke. In this case, it's functioning as electric trim, but in this case, we're just adjusting the trim manually through the use of buttons. Before we get going, let's quickly look at our route. We've got everything plugged into both our GPS and our uh, iPad. So we're starting off here at Gary, GYY. We're heading over to Midway, MDW, then up to KUGN, KMKE, and KFLD. Basically what that is doing, if we look at the map here, is that is taking us on a route um, up and along the coast of the lake, Lake Michigan. So we're going to stay kind of near the coast, hopefully crossing as many airports as we can, so we stay within fair gliding distance as much as we can for our route. So let's get going. All right, I've got 30 on the compass, 30 on the runway, 30 on the heading. We're ready to roll. Power set. Airspeed's alive. Temperature and pressure still in the green. There's 60. Go ahead and rotate. And we're off. Now that we're climbing, our trim was set to take off, which means we shouldn't have to do too terribly much to our trim. But you can see that from my hands-off flight, if I kind of release my hand from the yoke and see what the airplane does naturally, I'm just a little bit fast of where I want to be. So I can actually pull back on the yoke just a little bit and first position my yoke where I want it. And then I can trim out that pressure by using just a little bit of nose-up trim. 
you don't want to fly the airplane with the trim. If you need to use nose up, if you need your nose to go up, rather, uh, you don't want to just use nose up trim to get there. You always want to position your yoke and your pitch where you want it, and then use that trim to relieve the pressure off of the yoke. So this is a nice climb here. We can go ahead and establish our autopilot now that we're rolling. And we can go ahead and zoom in, show you what we got set up to. 6,500 feet will be our cruising altitude today. By pressing autopilot, we've gone into roll and vertical speed mode. We can check our speed. It's a little aggressive at 1,000. I like about 800 uh, to make sure we don't get too slow on that. And we can go ahead and arm our altitude. Now I've got, uh, let's see, GPS key is active, which means that our CDI-1 is receiving course data from our GPS, and that is the route we want to fly. So I will now press nav. And at this point, our GPS is climbing us at 800 feet per minute, up to 6,500 feet, where it will capture that altitude, and we are navigating on our GPS course. We're in great shape. I have our glide advisor over on the iPad giving us a ring and showing us where we should be able to glide if we were to lose our engine. Now one thing to keep in mind is that this is taking in um, considerations for performance for the airplane that I've plugged in from this simulator airplane, but it's actually considering our real world winds that it's pulling from four flight. So unless we're flying with the real winds, I'm sorry, the real yeah winds and weather in the simulator, this is going to be a little bit different um, than actual, uh, and you can see the wind must be coming from somewhere near the south because we can glide a lot further to our right than we can to our left. So this uh, wind ring is not going to be perfectly accurate for us today, but it still should give us a general idea of where we should be able to make it at the point where we lose our engine. And of course we could set it to real world wind in the sim if we wanted to do that today, but in this case, I like the weather as I have set. And that uh, glide advisor is just one tool that we can use to help us make a decision on where to land. Our climb is a little fast, our airspeed, so I can actually probably go and bump our 900 foot rate in instead of 800 foot, and we can get to altitude a little bit faster that way. We should be climbing between 70 and 80 to get us to uh, altitude in the quickest time possible. That beep means that we're a thousand feet from our target altitude. So once we get up to 6,500, we'll verify that our autopilot has captured that and we'll adjust our power and cruise settings accordingly. Go and get our checklist ready for cruise here. There's 500 to go. Alright, the airplane is now leveling itself off. You can see our vertical speed is heading back towards zero. 6,500 is where we are. We're showing uh, now altitude. Instead of being armed, altitude is now active. And we want to make sure that our RPMs do not creep up too much. And there goes our engine. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure we trim for the right airspeed when this aircraft is 68. All right, autopilot's disconnected. So we're actually going to nose over a little bit, and we're going to let we're going to hold our nose up, and we're going to let the airspeed come back to about 68. 
And we're going to go ahead and make sure that we have trim in. Now let's head down just a little bit and try to hold that 68. Now I'm holding back on the yoke just a little bit. So I'm going to apply just a little bit of nose up force. But the airplane is trimmed out fairly well. So at this point I can focus on other things. It's the ABCs of emergencies. A is airspeed. B is best field. So at this point, we need to look around and see where we can land. Now I've got Chicago Midway coming up not too far. The question is, where is it and can we make it? Can we see it off our nose? I can't see it off of our nose right now. Um, our glide advisor is saying that we might likely make it. Um, so I think we're just going to head straight forward at this point and make sure that we keep a nice solid 68 trim so we get our best glide, which means the most distance traveled for every foot of altitude lost. That's B, is best field. Now, we might start to look for another field as we get down, something to head to, but I think right now we can probably make it up to midway. So right now we just need to make sure we're staying on the right course for that. But it should be right off our nose. All right, I've got the airport in sight now, and I think we can make that field. So A was airspeed, B is best field, which we have in sight, and C is checklist. So let's go through our checklist, our emergency checklist here. Engine failure in flight, airspeed 68, fuel shutoff valve is on. Okay, the fuel shutoff is on. That's not one of the things that went wrong. Fuel selector valve is both. Auxiliary fuel pump, let's turn that on. Mixture, make sure that's rich, it is. And the ignition switch. So let's try the engine again, just with the key here. Let's try that engine. All right, getting nothing. We know it's not going to start. We're in the simulator. It's failed. It is broken. So the auxiliary fuel pump can come off. At this point, we can advise ATC. We can call our Mayday, 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 Mayday. November 978 Alpha Papa, complete engine failure. We can squawk 7700. And, of course, determine our landing site. So let's take a look back out again and see how we're looking. I think we're looking really good for this right now. If we open up our emergency checklist, let's just look at what's going to happen uh, next. Landing without airspeed, I'm sorry, without engine power. We're going to make sure our airspeed is 70. We're 65 with flaps down, kind of normal, if you will. We're going to pull our mixture to idle cutoff, and we're going to pull the fuel shutoff valve um, off. And we can go ahead and do some of those things right now, so we only got a couple last things to do. So let's do that. Let's go and pull our mixture to cutoff. Our fuel shutoff valve, we can pull all the way out. We're going to go ahead and take any fuel from being able to circulate through the airplane here and through the engine. And then the ignition switch, we can go and click that to off as well. At this point, we're going to put in our wing flaps as required. And then once we get below 500 feet, we're going to cut our master switch off and we're going to unlatch the door. And the reason we do that is because if we were to, um, we don't have the ability to go around at this point. So if we were to, um, say, wreck into something and uh, damage the airframe, we could be trapped inside and that door could be jammed. So we want to open that door before we land so as soon as we touch down and brake, we can hop right on out. It's even advised to put a shoe in between the door jam to make sure it doesn't close back and latch. Now we're looking really good. As a matter of fact, at this point, we're looking high. So we might can even do a circle or two uh, to get down to the airport. Uh, Midway looks to be at uh, 620 feet, and we're at still 4,200. So we've still got over 3,000 feet to lose, and we're in really good shape for this. Something to consider also is the winds and where those winds are coming from. I currently have them set to calm in the simulator. But at this point, we know we've got a nice, very nice long runway. We're assuming ATC has cleared us um, for priority landing and everybody else is out of the way. We sure are making a big stink here at, at uh, Midway. We could also look at what the longest runway is if we wanted to do that as well. If, we, if wind isn't a factor, we can land on the longest runway. I'm liking the one we've got right there in front of us. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to go ahead and start putting in a notch of flaps so we can steepen our descent angle. And we're going to go ahead and just kind of start doing some spirals down here. Nothing too dramatic or crazy. 
Um, at this at this point, um, our airspeed is not uh, critical to keep it 68 for best glide. We're not trying to stretch that necessarily. Um, but at this point, I just want to lose some altitude nicely. And of course, what we don't want to do is be halfway around a turn when it's time to straighten out. So every time we bring a turn around here, we want to make sure and we're losing about 700 feet a minute right now. So we're, we're bringing it down nicely. Um, but again, now that I put flaps in, I need to adjust the trim. Because what I don't want to have is have a tense hand trying to hold in the yoke pressure to a certain point. So I'm having to push over just a little bit. So if I just notch in a little bit of nose down trim, I'll be able to relieve that pressure. And at this point, I don't have to worry about pushing over. And the airplane should stay at a nice speed. This is simulating the most important landing of my life. You get one shot at it. Got to put it down in a good place. All right, I'm not going to make another turn. I know that I have the field made. I'm going to go ahead and put in another notch of flaps because I don't want to glide across that field either. Now I'm pushing down on the yoke because that flaps um, is making the airplane want to nose up a little bit. So again, a little shot of nose down trim. to make sure that I don't lose too much airspeed there. Now I'm still really high right now, so I can go ahead and initiate a slip. I can put in full right rudder, and then I can add a left aileron to try to help lose some of that altitude. Now it says to avoid flaps, fully extended slips. Let's go ahead and do this. We're gonna land with the flaps configuration we have. So we're gonna cut our master switch off, Gonna go ahead and pop our door open. Doors open. At this point, I need to get lined up with this long runway. I got a nice slip coming on down. I don't want to pick up too much airspeed. I'm gonna keep this slip in. We're still very high, but we still have lots of runway to work with. So I got a full slip in right now. Even if we were to overrun this runway a little bit, as long as we got a little bit of grass or something to work with, we should be in good shape. All right, I'm going to pull this slip out. I'm going to go ahead and get lined up nicely here. Let that airspeed come off. I got a little extra energy. I'm going to let that bleed off. Make it as much of a normal landing as I can. Brakes went a little crazy on me there, but we have stopped. I actually got excellent landing by my landing plug-in, 73 feet per minute. All right. Well, that was exciting. Next week is our big trip to Oshkosh. I hope to see you there. Be sure to study the NOTAM. I'm going to link to it down in the description. We're going to fly on in. We've got some great scenery for you. We have some extra airplanes in the area. It should be a blast. Thanks for flying along with me this time. Until next time, enjoy your flying.